she was done. She was ready. She loved the Lord passionately. A few months later, Tambo and I go to the post office there in Jacksonville. They don't deliver mail. You got to go to the post office to get your mail. And so we went to the mailbox, and there I opened up our little post box, and in it was a letter from Jesse. A letter from Jesse. She had gone to heaven three months previously. We sat there on the bench. We opened it up. It was a letter, you see. Well, our youth pastors at Applegate, they had all the high school kids at the beginning of the year make out these letters about the coming year and what their goals might be. They took the letters and stored them in these big mail bags and mailed out hundreds of them in mass. Well, Jesse's letter was in there, but none of us thought to pull it out. I didn't. So the letter was delivered as a new year was beginning. And this letter came. And it said, the coming year and you. And a whole lot of questions. The first question was, what do you want to have happen in the coming year? And it's the only question that Jesse answered. Jesse was a straight-A student, head cheerleader. She had a remarkable intellect. She was a wonderful girl. She is a wonderful woman. And, and so when she talked and when she wrote, she, I don't know where she got this, but she spoke in paragraphs. She could talk forever. I don't know where she got that, but <laughs> be that as it may. <laughs> to see a page left blank, only one question was answered, the first one. The rest of the page, both sides, left blank. What do you want to happen in the coming year and why? She said, I want to go to heaven. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. And that's all that was on the paper. She was so into prophecy, looking for the rapture. She so desired to be with the Lord. She was always talking about, hey, the Lord's coming one day, might be two day. She was focused on the things of eternity. The rest of the questions were irrelevant, left blank. She went to heaven. And I read that, and Tammy read that, and we just cried, you see. She's there. She's in heaven. She's with her Lord. My, oh, my. Here's the thing. Why does the Lord allow the snake to strike, the storm to come, the fire to burn? That we can identify. I speak to now parents that have seen kids go on to heaven seemingly prematurely, and I can relate to them and share with them. I, I've, I've worked with singles who have lost a spouse through death or divorce or whatever it might be and are raising kids. I can relate to that. I can speak to them and, and relate with them in a way that I could never have done previously. My, it's true. Quickly, why does the Lord allow these things to happen to me, to you? Observation. Barbarians are watching. Destination. The whale is moving. Identification. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, and you can't care unless you've been there. The Lord will have you be there. You see, it's true. Number four, quickly almost through number four, oh my, my, oh my, liberation. Why are we in this fiery trial, Paul might say, as he's by that fire with the snake launching out that day. Liberation, liberation. Fiery trials, ask Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You know the story. They were cast into the fiery furnace. Here they are, bound up with ropes, cast in. It's so hot, the guys that throw them in are wiped out, and they die because the heat is pouring out. My, oh my. And as these guys are cast in, you know the story. They don't burn. Their hair isn't singed. They don't even smell like smoke. It's amazing. The only thing that burnt was the ropes that had them bound up. That's all that burned off, and they're walking around in the fiery furnace. The ropes had burned off. It's amazing. Hey, listen. Why do fiery trials come our way? You're fired. Or... She burned me. Why does that happen? Fire burn? Hey, it's to set me, to set you, to set us free. We think, what a bummer initially, but ultimately you say, man, what a blessing. My first new car, the fellowship at Applegate gave me a little Honda Civic station wagon when they were really dinky back in those days. It was orange in color. My first new car, nobody was going to dent my car. So when I went into the big town of Medford, Man, I would park there at Kmart, like two miles away from the front door. Nobody's going to ding my doors. No way. Well, after two weeks, I have my car, and I'm pulling it into the church parking lot on a Sunday. The assistant pastor, Abner, pulls up next to me. Hey, John, he says, as he opens up his driver's side door. It goes into my passenger door. 
and there's a ding. And I get out, and he gets out, and he looks horrified. Oh, John, I'm so sorry. And I look at the ding, and I look at the ding, and I... And, and, <laughs> And he's feeling so bad, I say, Ab, no worries, don't worry about it. Now I can park wherever I want to. I'm free, I'm free. <laughs> it's true. We think, what a bummer, not so. Hey, that thing which initially seems to be kind of a ding or she or he that seems to be dingy, in reality, it's just setting you free. It's just setting you free. The ropes were burned off. The fire they thought was going to do them in, possibly, just really set them free in reality. Number five, and we're through. Number five, and we're done. Listen, not just liberation, but most importantly for me, revelation. Yeah, observation, number one. Destination, number two. Identification, number three. Liberation, the ropes are burned off, number four. Revelation. I never saw this before. I knew, you knew, we've all heard about the ropes being burnt off. It's true. But let me tell you something. I never saw this until I was ironing Jesse's dress when she was about four. And I was ironing the dress before Sunday morning service, and I'm thinking about my message. I'm talking about Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, fiery furnace. My mind begins to wander. I'm thinking about the study. I'm not watching what I'm doing. And the lace on her dress starts to smoke and catch fire. My, oh, my. And I'm, I, whoa, and there's a fire right before me as I'm thinking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> hey, it's crazy. And suddenly, through that, the Lord spoke to my heart. It was amazing. I never saw this before. I never saw it before. You know, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm, wow, this is a great illustration for my message right later on today, this morning. Revelation. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They're walking around. They're free. Nebuchadnezzar, the king that put them there, looks in and says to his advisors, how many men did we throw in the fire? And his advisors say, well, three, your nebbiness. And Nebi says, well, how is it then that I see four? And the fourth is like the son of God. The Lord was with them. You know the story. The Lord was with them in the fire. But here's what I never saw before. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are walking with the Lord in the fire. And they're there until Nebuchadnezzar says, would you guys please come out? I mean, they could have walked out of the fire any time they wanted. I mean, guys aren't going to say, if they're walking out, you get back in there. I mean, the first guys that threw them in are dead on the floor. And if you see three guys walking in a fire like that with the Son of God in the midst of them, and he, these three decide to come out, you're going to part like the Red Sea. You'll let them out, obviously. But they didn't come out. They didn't come out until Nebuchadnezzar asked them to. Why? They would rather be, listen, they would, listen, they would rather be in the fire and have revelation of Jesus Christ than out in the palace of prosperity where it's cool and hunky-dory but not have that same revelation. And brothers, I'm here to tell you the truth. You know this. People say, now, where do you get that stuff, John? You get it? You know, we know, we get it by being in the fire. That's when we see the Lord most clearly. Oh, he's always there. Don't misunderstand me. But the fact is, when things are comfy, cozy, hunky-dory, I don't look for him in the way that I do when I'm in the midst of a fiery trial or two. When I'm in the fire, that's when I have revelation of him. And you know what I'm discovering? Like you, I'm finding too, Lord, Keep me in the fire. I would rather be in the fire where I'm hearing your voice and sensing your presence and seeing your face than out where it's easy, but I don't see you so clearly. It's more satisfying, more fulfilling, more thrilling to be in the fire with you, Lord, than out where it's, quote, cool, but I don't see you in the same way. Hey, revelation. So when the sheriff called me, there's been an accident. It was Father's Day a few years back. Peter John was home. He was in his early 20s. Christy, too, she was 20. And they made their way to go into town to pick up some pizza to bring back for Father's Day afternoon. And the sheriff said, there's been a wreck. That's all I heard, man. 
he, he gave a location that somehow registered with me, and I, I jumped in my car, and I saw Christie's vehicle that she was driving with Peter John. It was there smashed like a pancake. It, it couldn't even be hauled off. It had to be towed away on the back of a flatbed truck. It never drove again. A Dodge Ram ran through an intersection and hit my daughter's car where Peter and Christy were driving broadside, this little Suzuki, and it smashed it like a pancake. And I got there, and I saw my kids. Somehow they were launched through the soft top. They were launched out the top of the car, and they were bruised up a bit, but they were fine, sitting there on the curb. And the car, though, this is why I'm sharing this, the car was smashed like a pancake, never drove again, smashed against the gates of the cemetery behind which was Jesse and Terry, my daughter and wife. And I get there and I go, what's this about? I mean, of all the places in the valley for that to take place, for that car to be smashed against those gates right there where the bodies of my wife and daughter lie, and the Lord spoke to my heart again in a way that is important. Revelation was given, and I, I don't have time and can't share it right here, right now. It's not the right time to do just that. But the fact of the matter is this. The Lord knows that it's in times like that when the serpent strikes, when the storm comes, when the fire burns, that we, we hear from him that we're focused on him, that we have intimacy with him. My brothers, listen to me. Listen to me. When you leave here, when we're through in just a few moments, what you need to know, you really do, is this. I want my light to shine, Lord. Good. But the snake is going to strike. But when it does, no worries. Just shake it off. Shake it off, because there's a reason for it. The barbarians are watching. Observation. The whale is moving. There's a new destination. People don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, and you can't comfort others unless you've been there. Identification. The fiery trials set you free. Those dings in your door, you watch, you'll see. Liberation. Liberation. Number five, you'll have fresh revelation every time the fire burns, the storm comes, the snake strikes. So men, let your lights shine brightly. And when the enemy attacks, make Coach Al Marucci proud of you. <laughs> Do what Paul shows us to. Shake it off. Shake it off. Shake it off. The Lord is going to use you mightily. Not just in the successes you have, but in the trials you go through, that's where people are going to be impacted most impactingly. Trust the Lord. Shake it off. Let's pray. Father, as my brothers, as we go our way, I would pray, Lord, that we might find ourselves not surprised by, blown away because of the storms, fiery trials, or snake attacks, but that we might find ourselves, Lord, truly in that place of letting others see you live through us, that they might be drawn to thee, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father, we trust you. Because we know, Lord, that all these things that we get to go through, that you're with.